Hello everybody, this is Women's Grandmaster Sabina Foysher. I really hope you enjoyed my comeback video with a brilliant opposite color bishop endgame won by my mother. If you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to check it out. For today, we are going to enjoy, hopefully, a beautiful game between none other than former world chess champion and one of the top players in the world, Garry Kasparov, against another very famous and great chess player who has never become a world champion, but he could have, Viktor Korchnoi. Unfortunately, Viktor Korchnoi passed away, um, but his legacy will continue for years to come. I believe he was a wonderful chess player and always ready to fight and win. He was never about to draw or anything. He would always fight um, his game till the end. And something that I really enjoyed um, from him was that he was never afraid to pick up pawns. Even if they were poisonous, he would try to find ways of how to get those pawns without losing too much material. So uh, that was a very nice anecdote that I read when I was a kid from his uh, best chess games books. So let's start. So Gary had white and this game was played in 1986 and Viktor Korchinoi started with a Nimzovich but it didn't happen to be a Nimzovich it was a Nimzo Indian, knight f3, bishop b4 check, bishop d2 and here uh, we have seen possible continuations for black uh, bishop takes d2 is one of them, queen e7 is another one but Viktor Korchinoi chose to play c5 here um, and uh, this was played longer time ago. Maybe this days is not as popular anymore. Um, G3. Kasparov is trying to continue his development and um, castle, of course, and everything. He doesn't hurry to capture him before. But now Queen B6, a very nice move by Viktor Korchnoi. And um, I believe at that time it was a novelty, or so they thought. Um, now, of course, the queen comes to b6, protects the bishop in b4 a second time, but of course with the idea of, in case of a capture, to take back with the queen, and after queen d2, knight c6, followed up by castle, and whenever black is going to be ready to make the queen trade, they're going to make the queen trade, and the end game should be about equal. But that's not the reason I'm showing you this game, of course. Queen b6 has another very interesting idea uh, that we might forget about, but it's putting pressure in d4. So if you are not very careful, you might end up um, having to capture in c5, which doesn't necessarily mean that it is in white's favor. Kasparov went bishop g2. Um, another possibility here for white is, of course, um, uh, knight c3, but we are going to look at the game, we are not going to focus so much on the opening. Knight c6, bringing pressure to d4 a third time. And here white is put in a situation where they have to decide whether they are going to capture in c5 or push d5. A move like e3 should not really be considered because when you put your bishop in fianchetto in g2, you're trying to avoid pushing the e-pawn, giving the fact that you would be weakening this diagonal and uh, white prefers to keep the pawn in e2. So either d5 or capturing in c5. Now if you capture in c5, bishop takes c5, of course attacking f2, castle. And then of course um, in this position black can play, well maybe not of course, but knight e4. A very typical move of the Nimzovich and Nimzo Indians and then black can reinforce the knight in e4 by playing f5 and um, this piece is going to be very annoying in white's territory. Um, the queen and bishop are nicely placed on this diagonal keeping of course pressure in f2 and trying to attract you to play e3 which is of course going to be in your detriment because what are you going to do with, with uh, this bishop in d2? I can even capture in b2 now do exactly what Korchinoi like to do, capture possible poisonous pawns. Um, but anyways, um, Kasparov decided to be aggressive. We all know Kasparov's style. He's a very aggressive 
player and he likes tactical positions, so he went for d5 here. We know that uh, also that Kasparov um, like uh, used to like, okay, now he doesn't play professional anymore, but he, he used to like to sacrifice material. Um, and he won a lot of games that way. And, you know, a pawn sacrifice shouldn't be a big deal for him, right? But maybe he hasn't chosen the right person to sacrifice pawns against because, like I said, Viktor Korchnoi was grabbing them all and, and defending very nicely. So that's exactly what we're going to see here. e takes d5, pawn takes d5, knight takes d5. Thank you very much for the pawn. Now all I have to do with black, I'm a little bit, you know, behind with my king. I need to make sure I bring it to safety. And of course, you know, by capturing this pawn, I kind of, well, he kind of uh, forgot about his bishop in c8. Temporarily. Don't worry. That bishop is going to come out eventually. Castle, finishing up the development, and now a very nice move. I'm, I'm, I like this move very much by Viktor Korchnoi. Knight d to e7. Of course, um, that knight in d5 looked kind of hanging. Of course, on the pin, one there, one here. I like to call these pins. They are more like uh, reverse pins. They can be possible discoveries. So, in order to make sure that those tactical ideas would disappear, he retreated to e7. Um, in this position, for example, bishop takes d2 would have been another continuation for black. Maybe it would seem natural to make some trades because we have a pawn up. But the problem is after knight b to d2, we're actually helping white develop. And... Um, the problem is that now knight c4 is coming with tempo. Um, you will have to do something about your knight if you consider moving it back now. Knight here comes, and then knight d6. And you're going to remain with the king in the center. So bishop takes d2 is not the right approach. That bishop was moved already once. It doesn't seem like this bishop is going to be attacked or trapped or anything like that. So until that happens, we won't touch it we'll be sure that we keep our cruises as coordinated as possible. That is what Viktor Korchinoi did. So after castle, knight d2, e7. Kasparov went for e4, a very interesting, aggressive move, trying to stop black from pushing d5, because, um, of course, this, bishop, uh, this pawn in d7 is backwards, so if we play d5, we'll strengthen our center and slowly develop more easily with black. But e4 was a very nice move by Kasparov, stopping d5. Okay, you stop me from playing d5, I certainly need to finish my development, so Korchina went for d6. Another possibility would have been to, of course, castle... Uh, with the idea of bringing the king to safety as soon as possible. But we have to consider that here white could go bishop e3, stopping the possible trade. And uh, you still have your pawn in... in uh, you still cannot play d5 here. Um, and if you play d6, well, we can try some a3. Try to chase your bishop away. And if you go bishop a5... Now b4 would, would go trying to utilize this pin. So black's only chance here is to actually play queen to a6 to pin um, himself this a3 pawn. And uh, of course if the knight gets out we can capture it. So white cannot have the opportunity of winning that bishop anytime soon. So after queen c2, bishop g4. This would be another possible continuation for Viktor Korchnoi. But instead he preferred d6, which actually I like a lot. Um, waiting for a second, protecting c5, and um, making sure that this bishop is going to be developed soon. Who knows? Maybe I can consider even long castle. Bishop e3. And uh, now, of course... Um, we have to be very careful about this pin. Like I said, possible a3 before threats. 
Now castle would have been possible and it would have gotten to the exact same line that I've just shown you. But instead, um, Korchner chose queen c7. Okay, we still have the pawn up, we're retreating, trying to avoid any tactical threats. And we'll keep going. a3, bishop a5. And Kasparov went for bishop f4. Because it seems like this pawn in d6 can be captured right back. But can it really? After knight e5, black seems to maintain its advantage of having a pawn up. So Kasparov has to try to find some tactical ways of getting back into the game because nothing is going to work now by capturing an e5. Yes, this pawn d6 is a backwards pawn, but how do you get it? Um, moves like knight c3 are really nice, but this bishop anyways doesn't do very much, so we can always just capture the knight and white's pawn structure would be destroyed. So Kasparov came up with an interesting idea, b4. So he's trying to get back the initiative, because it seems like now there's nothing going on, black is going to castle next move, and it doesn't seem like there's going to be an attack. So he's trying to get back the initiative by making moves with tempo, b4. Okay, c takes b4, a takes b4. And what do you think Viktor Korchnoi did here? Well, I mentioned to you about ca grabbing all the pawns, right? He went for the second one. Bishop takes b4. And um, he's just challenging Garry Kasparov to find the right way of really getting his pawns back. Kasparov is trying. Queen a4 check. Well, of course... Korchino is not going to give that bishop away, so knight c6. Now, he's trying to use this pin. It won't work with the capture in e5, so Kasparov went for knight to d4. Um, and here, um, the move chosen by Korchino was a5. He tried to, to keep his pieces as protected as possible and avoid more tactical ideas. Now it seems that um, maybe even bishop b7 would have been a nice um, solution for black. Because now if you play knight f5, I can just castle. And um, it doesn't seem like there's any tactical ideas besides knight e7 check. Try to eliminate the defender of this bishop in b4. But no, black can consider playing a5. And now some another piece has been traded, and then these pawns can try to get pushed together. Instead, uh, Korchner went for a5, which I actually like. I don't think it's it's uh, that bad of a choice. The only problem with this move is that the more you stay with the king in the center, um, the more dynamic the position can get for white, and um, Kasparov can keep the initiative. And that's exactly what he did here after knight c3. He wants to bring the knight to d5 or the other one to b5 and then have some knight c7, for example. Or try to use this pin to win the, the bishop in b4. So, Korchnoi made the right choice. He went bishop d7. Um, if we take the knight, we have to consider this too, right? He was considering not only capturing all the pawns, but pieces that were hanging as well. And here, he might have been afraid of knight b5. And if you go back queen d8, for example, that bishop is going to be captured. And then white will get to play rook d1. And white does have the bishop pair. There are still um, weaknesses in black's position, like this pawn in d6. There's this d5 square. Um, these pawns don't seem like they are going to be able to be pushed very fast. So this would, um, although black does have two pawns up, it's not very simple to progress the position. So that is the reason why Korchner played bishop d7. Now what's the trick? After knight d5, queen d8, um, I still keep the opportunity of playing some b5. And you playing knight b5 is not going to do very much 
for you because after castle knight c7 is just attacking a rook. Um, and now, of course, white has to be careful about this possible discovery and losing some material. So, Kasparov went for knight f5. It's more important to try to attack the king than do something on the queen side. Short castle. And as strange as it might look, white has no attack. And how could he? There's just one knight here in f5 attacking g7, having possible, a possibility of some knight h6 or knight e7, which of course do not work at the current moment. There's this other knight in d5 that also has some possibilities of knight f6, knight e7, but of course they do not work at the current moment. So if black would have the opportunity of playing some knight d4, trading that knight, chasing this queen away, the more pieces black trades, the easier is going to be for him to convert this position into a winning one. So Kasparov cannot allow that to happen. We certainly see this reverse pin that's going to be a discovery, so it's time to move that queen from a4. And where else to bring it than to try to attack white's king? g7 seems to be like a weakness, but how can this queen even get close to g7? I have a lot of students who often fear possible attacks to their king, but in chess, uh, chess is like math, you know, it's, it's clear, you've got clear points and uh, you can't just imagine things, you have to make sure move by move that things are going to happen the way you want them to happen and you have to check for your opponent's answers as well and you cannot just say I'm afraid. In chess, yeah, maybe you can be a little bit scared of possible things happening to you but move by move those things if there's no clear way of how they're going to happen there's no need to be scared so queen d1 i'm i could not read of course victor korchnoi's mind but i can tell you from the way the position looks that there's nothing to be fearful about with black of course i know the end of the game but but still bishop c5 okay so it looks like this queen is greatly placed, it can certainly come to h5, but it won't do very much next. So Kasparov came with another idea. He went for rook c1. Um, he considered trying to have some um, possible hanging piece here, because if at some point white can capture one of these pieces, then the other one is going to be hanging. But let's not forget, this knight is in c6 as well, so this knight in e5 is protected. Anytime there's going to be a capture in e5, the knight will capture back, and anytime there's going to be a capture in c5, the pawn will capture back, and the knight will be protected. So there's no need to worry or panic with black. But we need to find some way of continuing this game, because the king is to safety, but white is quite active. They had some initiative, and their pieces are still active, and it doesn't seem like we can chase them away very soon. However, we do have two pawns up, so it's time to think of starting to push them, which is exactly what he did. Well, what to do? That pawn won't reach very far, so Kasparov said, it's now or never. I should try to find a way to win the game here. Well, Korchino is going for the queen. I don't see any threat. Why would I panic, right? A5, A2. But now, there could be some possible threats to the king. So now you can start considering ways to protect. Queen h5. Now that the queen is coming into play, we need to see if there are possible threats here for white. Um, so, I don't see a very specific clear one, but you cannot certainly promote, and if you consider a move like b5, then you have to be very careful, because there is a little thing that could be very annoying, this knight f6. You can obviously not go to h8, because there's gonna be a checkmate, and if you capture, 
white has a very good move, not capture back, of course, but this brilliant move, queen h6, threatening mate, you have to capture this knight in f5, and here another very good move, we are not capturing pieces back, we are going for the initiative and for the mate, g takes f6, threatening mate in g7, so here black would have to give away the queen, that's the only way of stopping the mate in g7, and after queen takes f6, um, white seems to be winning. So there is indeed a big threat that you have to be careful for. So a move like b5 would not work. And so in this position, Korchinoi decided to just capture this knight in f5. Now, um, another opportunity most likely would have been even capturing in f2 because if rook takes now we can promote to a queen and this entire threat would not work that well anymore queen h6 threatening mate capturing and after g takes f6 queen takes f6 queen takes f6 we do uh, we do have to remember that we did promote as well so now look at this brilliancy knight f3 to check and the queen is going to be captured next. So black would be winning. Um, and so after bishop takes f2, if white goes king h1, we can even play knight d3. And again, this threat is not going to work. There's another possible threat that white has with knight takes g7, but since there's no direct one or two moves threat that is going to end in mate for, uh, for white, um, black can simply retreat the bishop, protect the diagonal, and eventually win some mater more material and win the game. But instead of bishop takes f2, he decided to take the knight, and I don't blame him. I mean, it does look a little bit dangerous. So, he takes f5, and here this bishop comes into play. To protect the diagonal against any possible mates. Now, um, if f6, if Kasparov would have played f6, um, there is a defense, no need to panic, do not dare to capture there, you don't want to be mated, okay? But you have this move knight g6. You have to remember that in chess you can retreat, specifically after you have won lots of material. So, um, black's next move is quite simple. I want to promote a1, queen. And it doesn't seem like white has any other mates in, in mind with this bishop in d4 controlling the diagonal. Black is totally safe. So, Korchnoi was a great <laughs> defender, I can tell you that. And you can see it yourself from this brilliant game. Now, Kasparov... He is a dynamic player, once again, so he tried to find as clear and as many of possible threats as possible. I've repeated myself there. So bishop takes e5, now knight takes e5, and bishop e4. Doing the desperado here, trying to create some threats on h7. Threatening f6, and then, of course, checkmate. So, how to escape that mate? Just rook e8. Kasparov found another nice move, rook c7. Of course, if he plays f6, we have the same nice defense as before. Knight to g6. So, rook c7. And here, a1 queen. Rook takes a1 Rook takes a1, king g2. And um, Korchinoi seems to have been in time trouble here, I believe. Um, I've read some notes about this game, and it seems like he could have been in time trouble and went for rook a2. It's not a real mistake or something, but there could have been some other moves that would lead to a win here for black. Like maybe even rook e1, for example. Um, attacking the bishop that's, you know, a really good attacker uh, itself, 
and if we manage to get you off the diagonal then there's nothing to worry about for black right like we can just capture that bishop and king takes if queen takes this g5 pawn is hanging and now uh, what this pawn is hanging so g6 would work chasing the queen away having the bishop in d4 is a really nice um a two for black because there will never be knight f6 and there will never be any possible checkmate in g7 so that diagonal is totally safe but okay he went for rook a2 i mean i have nothing against this move i think it's a really nice continuation he's trying to get some more material now kasparov found some idea rook e7 and what to say about this move well, he's trying to get a little bit active once again, possible taking in e8, possible knight f6 ideas. Kuchino captured in f2, king g3, and here he took this rook in e7, which wasn't that bad just yet, but another very interesting tactical move would have worked here. I mean, knight g6. Amazing that this knight g6 keeps protecting the position, avoiding any attacks from white, and I, the game would would finish very fast because there should be some trades now. If if white captures in g6, simply h takes g6, the the rooks will have to be traded. Otherwise, black will win another piece. Queen takes, and now this queen doesn't have a very much very many moves, queen g4 or, or try and queen h4 and now queen e5 we've got an exchange and three pawns up with black it doesn't seem like white is gonna have any kind of perpetual or anything you have to be just one more m moment um, on, the, on the look because there's queen c8, queen h3 so we can just protect that c8 square and now it is white's king that might be in danger after some queen c3 stuff so um, this would have been a really brilliant um, brilliant move for black now rook takes e7 was not that bad in itself it just allowed some little trick f6 with the idea that of course takes and mate so you only have one well two moves technically h6 would have worked as well but knight g6 is the way to go to avoid those mates in h7. And here Kasparov took knight takes e7. So although those rooks were traded, now this queen has infiltrated in h7 and there are some possible threats in capturing in g6 and possible perpetuals. And here Korchinoi blundered. Bishop takes f6. This is move 36 of the game, so if he was indeed in time trouble, he he messed up the position after bishop takes f6, unfortunately. After such a brilliant defense, um, it was hard to find the right continuation here. It doesn't seem natural to take an f6 with the pawn, because the king needs to be safe, so capturing it, it looks like the king will be weak but white doesn't have any ways of actually attacking this king because he only has three pieces left and black has enough pieces to protect against any possible mate specifically this knight in g6 is a great piece so if you're considering of capturing it no worries i'm taking back and again you do have a queen and a bishop you could potentially create some mating threats but how are you going to create those mating threats um, if you just have two pieces and here there's just one move that wins for black and you have to see it don't make the big blunder of playing queen e7 because then you just get mated so don't make that big blunder but find this queen e8 protecting the, the mate in the position now any checks I'm going to escape that way and once I've reached the other side of the board, you are the one who's going to get mated. And this this queen e8 is just brilliant. It's it's an amazing move. It's very hard to see, specifically if you're in time trouble. 
So it is understandable that Victor Korshner missed this opportunity. And if you don't play bishop d5, if you try giving checks, once again, this king is going to escape in a zigzag. Oops, sorry. If you give me that check, I'm going to go with queen e6. Oh, what am I talking about? King e6. I'm so sorry. I'm getting a little bit tired after this 30-minute video. I didn't expect it to take this long. Um, so, queen g7, obviously, oops. No queen e8. Big, big blunder, right? After king e8, simply checkmate. So, I would go king e6. A big, big apology. King e6, and you're out of queen checks. Of course, you have a bishop check or two. They're not going to be very helpful. But okay, and what else, by the way? After g takes f6, there's really um, not very much that white can do. If bishop takes g6, once again, do not make the big blunder blunder of capturing with a queen in e7, but make sure that you find f takes g6, because once again, you're not going to get mated. Um, this time you are doing the zigzag. Okay, so king d7, one more check, and now you can go king c8. There could be potentially more checks, but after king b8, the checks are over. Black has a rook up. This king is in the middle of the board. Black's king got to safety on the other side of the board, and it should be winning very soon. Now, unfortunately, Korchnoi blundered. Like I said, bishop takes f6, and here after knight takes g6 check, pawn takes g6, um, white was able to hold on to the position by playing queen um, h8 check, capture, and now bishop d5, one more check, the king would go, and king takes f2. And this is an opposite color bishop, a little bit different than the game that I showed you yesterday. So as you can see, I'm trying to link my games. Um, but this would, in fact, be a draw. The pawns are very close to each other. And um, um, it's, it's um, very difficult, almost impossible for black to win this. They, they won't have a way to enter, really, with their king easily. Uh, however, however, Kasparov made another mistake here. He didn't realize what a big um, opportunity he had to save the game. He was probably still thinking about how to try to mate black. Or maybe he just thought that um, it's the exact same thing. But you see, move orders in a chess game matter so, so much. You can go from a winning position to a losing position in a matter of seconds as you touch the piece about to make a move that you think is right anyways. Trust me, I've done it many times. So after king takes f2, Korchinoi, um played queen b6, which wasn't the best choice, but if he would have given bishop d4 check first, this king has to go somewhere, and now queen takes g5, it won't be that easy uh, for uh, white to trade the queens. And if they don't trade the queens uh, early on, then obviously black is going to have big chances to win. He has a queen that with which he can give a bunch of checks, and with the queens on the board, it's not the exact same thing opposite color bishop. Um, so, bishop d4 would have been the right choice. Instead, Korchinoi made another mistake. Queen b6 check, king g2, and now he went queen b2 check. And um, Kasparov played king h3, which again changed the game into black's favor. King f3 was the correct approach because now, after queen b3 check, you can try to go back and queen takes g6. And this is not the exact same thing as the other line that I showed you. Uh, now the queen and bishop don't seem to be coordinated well enough to be able to checkmate white's king. But after king h3, the correct move to win the game for 
Viktor Korchnoi would have been bishop e5. Not grabbing the pawn, unfortunately, this idea of always capturing pawns that are being given by the opponent didn't always work. And I think that might have dragged him down sometimes uh, because if he, you consider that you are always taking things and then you're going to defend and once your uh, defense is going to work out, you're going to be able to transform that position into a win. Well, other times it's better not to take those pawns and try to find other ways to win the game. And this would have been that way of winning because, uh, well, now we have a clear threat. Queen takes h2. Uh, any check here, queen h8, wouldn't matter because we go king e7 and we're out of checks. But what white should be very careful about is really that h2 pawn. And king g4 wouldn't do very much because simply queen e2 check. Check bishop. You have to go bishop f3. One more check. Um, if you go king h3, we go queen f1 check. If you go bishop g2, queen f5, king h4. This is all forced moves. Queen f4 check. King h3 check. Queen g3 mate. I'm not even looking for uh, to win your queen. I'm going for the mate. And the same thing would have happened um, here after queen c4 check. Queen f1, if you go king g4, we go queen g1 check. And um, you don't have a right place to go. I'll take queen h2, queen g3. And of course, if you put the bishop, we just capture. And the exact same thing, queen takes h2, queen g3 mate. So this move would have been brilliant and brought Viktor Korchnoi the point as he would have deserved. A very nice defending game showing lots of determination of keeping the material advantage and then transforming the game into a win. Unfortunately here, instead of bishop e5, he did capture this pawn in g5. And after queen takes g6, now black to, has to be a little bit careful about possible checks, perpetual checks or mate ideas coming from white side. So whenever he played queen f6, Kasparov traded and the game ended in a draw. This was a much longer video than I normally make, but I thought it was a, def a very important game uh, with lots of tactical ideas worth considering. If you enjoyed this analysis, be sure to check out the game and make some of it your own. It definitely has so much tactical ideas and... I really hope you enjoyed it. Rest in peace, Victor Korchinoi, but know also that your games will never be forgotten and I'm sure lots of people will have a lot to learn. So, I'll see you in my next video. Have a wonderful day.